Welcome back to the IE427 garage, everybody. A little different open today. Um, started the car because I wanted to check function of our vacuum switch. And um, if any of you have had to deal with any of the vacuum system on any of these Coyotes, all the way from the Gen 1 all the way through the Gen 3 like we have here, you'll know that the vacuum system, it can be very confusing. And after reading a couple of forum posts on a couple of different things about the variable vein um, intake manifold on this Gen 3 Coyote, I made the decision to order some parts and we got those in in the last couple of days and I'm gonna show you exactly what those do. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna actually give you a little sneak peek to show you that what we've done is actually allowing our vacuum bellows that we installed for the heater switch to work the way it's supposed to. Okay, as you can see, as I operate the switch inside the car, it's opening and closing the valve exactly like we want to. So basically it's bypassing when the car is started and as soon as I hit that switch inside for the heater, it opens that valve up and it sends coolant to the heater core and allows it to circulate through the heater core and back to the engine. So this is what I've got on the actual engine. And while it may not be the prettiest thing in the world, it works. So on top of the intake here, we have two vacuum ports. We have this 3 8 vacuum port that is what my finger is on right now. And then we have a larger 5 8 vacuum port. So 3 8 and 5 8 We've got the 5 8 capped because although I'm probably confident we could find a connector for that, these 3 8 ones were far more available. And the one I had, I boogered up as I was taking it off. And so I had to order... I had to order one anyway, so I just ordered a bunch. I think I ordered six of them. And then what I've done here is I've put two T's in. I put a T in here, and I've put a T in here. The first T right here actually goes back to our fuel pressure regulator that we have mounted on the firewall back here. And that's to provide uh, engine vacuum to the valve so that when it sees vacuum, uh, or actually when it sees a loss of vac vacuum, it raises our pressure on our fuel pump or our fuel line. The other T here goes over to our vacuum switch which is located in the fender well and provides vacuum or doesn't provide vacuum to our vacuum bellows for our four port valve that's over there on the side of the car, side of the engine bay. So with all that working now I can now start to finish off some of the engine compartment accessories and I can get that fender splash shield in place. I've already got the one over here on the driver's side done but I've been waiting on the one over on the passenger side because I'm waiting for those vacuum fittings. So I got those, I hooked them up. Today was the first day I had to actually verify that all, all of that stuff works. So right here you can see the vacuum switch gets engine vacuum here 
and then it decides whether or not we get vacuum to this vacuum bellows. Right now, at rest, with no power to the uh, valve and no coolant circulating, the valve is open. But as soon as we turn the key and the engine starts, once we see vacuum, this closes. And that's the way it's going to run when you're just driving down the road without calling for heat. As soon as you turn the heater switch on, this switch closes, sends vacuum to the bellows, and it in turn opens up and sends coolant to the heater core. So that's all done, and now since I've got this all ready to go, wiping off all my aluminum chips, we can go ahead and we can put this splash shield in place, and probably while I'm at it, I'll lube the front end because I'm right here. I don't have that many things left on my list of things to do for this car. Um, I'll go over that real quick here. Basically, what I've got is I want to make sure that I attach the, the clamps onto the power steering uh, bellows, the boots. I've got to lube the front end. I've got that passenger front splash shield. I just tested the vacuum. I wrote stuff for the heater, so that's a go. We have the wipers to install, which I'm probably going to do dead last because I just, oh, I hate that project. And then down here at the bottom, I've got new lug nuts that have to go onto the car. I've got those black lug nuts that are going to have to go on the car. And then right back up here, I've got the door sills and the carpeting that go on those. That's it. After that, this car is done. It's ready for some glamour shots outside. It's ready for a few test miles, and then it can get shipped off to the owner. So one of the other things that I did during the week was I got all of the pretty stuff on the windshield mounted. So we've got our sun visors. They're mounted and installed. I kept the protective covering on them to keep them from getting scratched. Those will, that'll come off when we detail the car. I've got the wind wings on. Same thing. I'm keeping the protective covering on there until we're ready to detail the car. We've got the peep mirrors installed. Now, I did the peep mirror on this side at a different angle to try to project the mirror around the windshield so that the driver will have a better view from his seated position to see out the, the mirror. If I put it straight up and down, then it blocks the actual mirror. On the driver's side, it's the same drill, but we kept that mirror standing more straight up. So the mirror is more in a straight up position right here. Again, we've got the wind wing and the sun visor on over here. So as you can see, we're quickly knocking things off of our punch list and I'm going to keep working the rest of the day and probably into this coming week to get this car wrapped up and hopefully get this thing delivered to the customer. Oh, in the next week or so? We'll see. So I'll go back to all of you when I've got something more to show you. All right, a bit later in the day, I'm uh, wrapping things up for today. And I figured I'd bring you back, catch up on all the stuff I got done today. I did just finish getting the front end lube. The only thing I have left to lube are the lower control arms. But since I've got to do those with the tires on so that I can get the bridge jack out of the way, I'll probably do that tomorrow. I'll leave myself a note. But here you can see all the fittings, the Zerks on top of the control arms, the ball joint, the um, outer tie rod, that's all greased, and the lower ball joint. So the only thing I have left are the two Zerks that are facing in on the two control arms on each side of the car. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the wheels on it. I'm going to lower the car down and then I'll show you what I did on the interior of the car. And I think the interior is pretty much done now, so hang on. Music update for you. Rod Stewart, Maggie May. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to lower this lift down, and uh, I'll show you the finished door sills. So let's see if I can do this without killing myself or anyone else. That ought to be good. All right, so a little variation on what we did on the last car. We went ahead, I pulled some bolt carpeting out from upstairs 
And what I did, I ditched the factory five pre-cut pieces for this whole area right here. So that I have one piece that is on the bottom of each of the three sections and it wraps under. So basically what I did is before I pop riveted this piece in, I glued the, the tail that had gone over the edge and onto the bottom. I glued that on and then pop riveted the piece in uh, with, I don't know, a dozen or so pop rivets and then wrapped the carpet over and now it's glued down tight. And then I went ahead and I added this piece of edge trim so that we save this edge as there's uh, entry and exit from, from the car. So these are all done. I've got the latches adjusted one more time because a lot of times this right here, this molding that goes on here to finish off the edge, will keep the door from closing the same distance as it did before. So that closes nice. And then the other side is done as well. And we did this side the same way. So we wrapped the carpeting around the piece, pop riveted it in, and then folded the carpet over and then added our trim piece and our finished molding on the edge of the door. So I've got to add one, one uh, item to my, my list. I forgot until I was working inside the car right there. That we have door panels that need to go on this and I gotta investigate well whether those door panels that were supplied by factory 5 install like herbs with velcro the industrial strength velcro or whether they get screwed in and uh, figure out what I'm gonna do and when I'm gonna mount those normally if it's the velcro the adhesive I wait until the very end like right before the car is due to go home but if they're screwed on then it really doesn't matter um, so yeah, I will catch up with you guys tomorrow as I continue to uh, cross things off the punch list. Well, welcome to tomorrow, everybody. Um, I was hoping to get the wipers done in this video, but I don't think that's going to happen at this point. Um, just haven't been feeling myself lately, and so production in the shop has really dropped off. What I've done today, since I've been in the shop, is just started to clean some stuff up. Uh, I had tools out everywhere. And, I've uh, preached to you in the past when you're not feeling yourself, put tools away. And so that's what I've been doing uh, for the past hour or so. But I did get the lug nuts installed on the car. So you can see Factory 5 provided some black lug nuts to hold the bronze powder coated wheels. And uh, they really look sharp. So I did that on all four corners. I'm going to go ahead, I'll follow that up and... Uh, Get the torque wrench out, torque all the lug nuts to spec, but um, I think that's that's going to do it. We uh, we made a big dent in uh, the finishing touches to the car. Um, like I said, the windshield wipers need to go in. I dug out the engine cover, um, so we've got that in a box right there. That's the one with the Ford Racing symbol on it right there. So that's a Gen 1. Coyote engine cover that we're going to be putting on the Gen 3 engine. Uh, we've already test fit it. We know it fits. And, um, and let's walk over to the list. See what else we got on there. Um, I'm going to lube the, the lower control arms on the front before I head in for the evening. But uh, so what do we got left? I got to put the uh, power steering boots back on. I just had them loose to uh, change the toe end of the car. Lube the front end. I'm almost done with that. Just got the uh, lower control arms to take care of. The wipers. The new lug nuts are in, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, can cross that off. The engine cover, which we just talked about, and the door panels. So the door panels are over here on the truck, I do believe. I think I stuck these right up on the truck over here all right so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pull those out oh there they are they're right here on top of the f-350 workbench and yeah don't worry everything's in plastic it's not scratching the paint of the work truck uh, workbench so those are the panels that are going to go on to the doors of our 25th anniversary Mark IV. And I'm going to turn these things over and see how they attach. 
Now, it looks like we're screwing these in because uh, it doesn't appear that they have any Vel Velcro on the back of them. But, you know, I guess that's just the way it is. As always, if you are enjoying the content here, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, comment if you'd like. We'll see you all next time. Have a great day.